Welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to start an online business and we're going to do that while I cut my hair. I get a lot of questions about how I do what I do, how I get sponsorships, how I make it all happen and my hair has been annoying me so I wanted to cut it. Hi Carissa. Um, yeah, so we're going to do a little bit of everything in this live. Hi, welcome, welcome. Um, thank you for joining. Oh, okay, so I've got a mirror here in front of me and uh, we're just gonna chat. Let me bring this closer so I can see all of your messages. Hi, Leah, how are you? How's teaching going? So I've been kind of uh, annoyed with my hair for a while and I wanted to cut it, so we're gonna cut. Ugh. Hi, um, John, do you remember me? Hi, John. Okay, so right now let's see what length we're at. Okay, so kind of long. I would like to go here, maybe shorter. Um, I always cut my hair. I don't recommend that you do this um, yourself because you're going to uh, be upset with the results. Hi, Katie. But for me, like, I've just noticed the volume isn't there, and I know that if it wasn't as heavy, I'd have a little bit more volume. So we're just gonna start cutting. Uh, welcome, everybody. You know what, I'm gonna need like a little bucket or something to put the hair in. So let me grab that. Um, I'll be right back. But you know what, we're a casual channel. Okay, so I've got the little bin. Okay, let's learn something. Well, okay, so um, if you have questions about how to start an online business, um, let me know and then I'll answer them. I'll, I'll also kind of start with uh, the questions that I've received before and the ones from Instagram. Okay. So I get questions about how to make channels grow, Instagrams grow, Twitters grow, all that stuff. So there are some general um, rules that work well and then I'll tell you which ones also work specifically for Instagram and specifically for YouTube. Um, okay. So, how did you get started? How did you, how do you drown out vultures or get over your fear of people? And do you work for a living or is this what you do? All right, let's get the first cut out of the way. Ah! Okay, very crooked, that's okay, because we're gonna be cutting for a while. So we got the first cut. <laughs> Boom. Oh, that already feels better. That already feels so much better. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> you guys stop chatting. What's going on? Why'd you get so quiet? <laughs> okay, so uh, do you have a work for a living or is this what you do? This is what I do. Um, I do YouTube for a living and I'm very fortunate to be in that position. Um, there we go. Uh, I'm very fortunate to be in that position, but it is also, uh, I've worked really hard to be in this position and I've had a lot of support and help to get to this position. So it's a combination of things. All right. I'm cutting kind of like choppy because I will perfect later. All right, here's the second chop. How much do you win from YouTube? It varies like, um, the YouTube analytics will let you know how much you make. So I actually, I love being very transparent. So I'll show you my analytics where it shows. Okay, so um, 
1,990 for the last 28 days came from YouTube. So 1,190 came from YouTube ads. Um, that's what pays. Oh, I kind of like this length actually. And I, I'm not doing it with the brush because I, uh, I don't want it to look like, you know, perfect, I guess. Perfect is boring. Perfection is boring. I always tell you guys that. Sorry about that. Let me turn that off. So it is a lot and it's not like I, uh, how do you feel about getting closer to 200,000 subscribers and not enough to live on? Exactly. So 1,990 sounds like a lot, but when you think about it, um, my rent is $900. Internet is a hundred dollars. So that's a thousand. I'm paying for my car, which is three fifty a month. So that leaves me with six fifty, and then I pay for my phone and my parents' phones and internets for them. So that's minus two hundred dollars. <laughs> so that leaves me with very little if you calculate trying to live off of just YouTube. Um, so first, uh, this is how I got started. I wanted to have a YouTube channel because I've always made video. Like since I was in junior high, I would make videos. Like I would make videos of family vacations with anything that I could make a video with and I would edit them. I didn't know that in the future there was gonna be this thing called YouTube and that I'd be like posting stuff on YouTube. Like I never made it. No insurance also, exactly. Um, that's that's never what I thought would happen in my life. Like when I was growing up, I thought I was gonna be a veterinarian. So um, that was the career that I thought was gonna be me. The video editing was just a hobby. Hi, I'm cutting them. Make sure I do that in the frame. Okay, so I'm doing twists just so that it doesn't look super straight. But please do not try this at home. I can't stress that enough. Like I've just been cutting my hair for a long time. So I'm a little bit more comfortable with experimenting and it's kind of long enough that I could do that. Um, <clears throat> if you want to start your, your online business, like let's say that you want to start a channel. Um, I made the mistake of wanting to start a channel about something that I thought was fun. And not that I don't think this is fun, but my first channel failed. It failed miserably. It's still out there. <laughs> I don't even remember what it's called, but it failed miserably because I was making it because of, hi Bethany, what I thought was fun, what I thought was cool, what I thought like was supposed to be a, a YouTube channel, what I thought would succeed. And that didn't work. It was a travel uh, channel. And it's not like, oh, well, there's many travel channels out there, blah, blah, blah. No, like if you enter the space and you're really good at what you do and you provide value to people, then it doesn't matter if there's already a lot of competition. Like the best will rise to the top. <clears throat> so I made that, that channel because I thought that that's what would get me like famous. So I, I, would ha I came into it the wrong reasons. And it's not like you have to have a good heart about it either. I don't believe that either. But I'll tell you the reasons that I think will work. Um, I think that if you wanna start a channel, what you have to do is something that you're good at. And if you don't know what you're good at, then you're gonna to have to listen to the compliments that you've gotten from people who are close to you that say like, you're really good at this. And if you don't think that's a compliment because to you it comes so easily that you think like anybody could do it, that's what you're thing is like if you think oh anybody can do it because it's that easy to you trust me not anybody can do it you are one of a kind in that field you are unique in that your brain just knows how to decode how to do that one thing so um for me what my my thing is explaining things i am good at explaining things to people like explaining how to I kind of like this length. I might keep it here. I thought it was gonna go shorter, like there. What do you guys think? Should I go shorter? Or is that kind of cool? Um, I kind of like that. Sh 
shoot. Tell me what you guys think. Good at teaching, I think you mean. I'm good at teaching. I'm good at explaining things. I'm good at making something that's really difficult, easy to do. Um, I'm good at making people feel like they're making progress. Shorter, if you like it, keep it. I kind of wanted to go like there. I like it. It's kind of fun to... It looks better than it did before though, doesn't it? And like, um, before it had like no volume and I feel like this now has volume. I might go a little shorter. It sure did. <laughs> Live with it for a day. I guess I could do that. Huh. This is fun. Let me go a little bit short. Okay, so whatever floats your boat. Let's say that you have that one thing that you're really good at. Then the next thing you wanna do is find a way to share that with people. Here's another thing. If you've ever done a Google search or searched for something and it wasn't out there and you had to figure out a solution on your own, that right there is a great opportunity for you to provide value to people in a channel that can make you money eventually. So for example, like I was looking for ukulele reviews on Amazon ukuleles because I lived in an island where all I could get was Amazon ukuleles. I'm gonna go like oh, that much. And I looked and I couldn't find anything. So what I did is that once I got Amazon ukes, like I read reviews for weeks but I wanted video reviews. Um, once I got my ukes, I started doing video reviews of the ukes. And so that's what started getting a little bit of attention for my channel. It was that like, I needed a service. It wasn't out there, so I provided it for other people. And, um, and so the reviews were what got my channel some attention. And then I was not being valued at the work that I was, um, that where I was, like they weren't paying me what I thought I should be paid in exchange for my education. I have a master's degree, a bachelor's degree, and a teaching certification and work experience. And I was creating a lot of new musical programs in my school. And I felt like they were paying other teachers with similar education backgrounds as me um, twice or three times what I was getting paid. So I asked for um, better pay and they declined. And so I submitted a 30 day notice and I felt a little sad that like I had started a ukulele program and that my students wouldn't have me anymore and that I wouldn't be able to teach them anymore. So what I did is I started making tutorials that they would be able to watch even if I wasn't working at the school anymore. And so, and the reason I did that um, was because I knew that there was no one on YouTube teaching the way I was teaching, which was teaching for the absolute beginner who needs time. Like I, if I say go to, from a C to an F and then to a G7, like that's kind of like, whoa, you went too fast. But I say, okay, let's hold a C together. Let's play it together. All right, let's hold an F together. Ready? Like I was giving a lot of space for the, you as the viewer to engage with me, for you to participate. And nobody else tells you to look up exactly, or like look up, look at my hands, or the Lego hand, the house for the mouse, like where does the thumb go, like how to angle the body, like you always want the sound hole facing out, like all of those little things that I wanted my students to know because I could see them making the mistakes in the classroom. Nobody else was explaining that on YouTube, and so that's why I taught the way that I did. And I think that's why, the, <laughs> it's really crooked. That's why um, Ron, Roniesha Valle, Roniesha Valle, hi. That's why the channel did so well. Yeah, don't look at your uke, look up here, exactly. So um, the value that I was providing to people was that they were getting uh, the the feeling of like, oh, this teacher is here with me. It's true, you teach like an elementary teacher, that's super helpful. I, it's because it was for my elementary students that I was doing that. So I wasn't doing it for me. So if you're doing the YouTube channel for you, you've already started on the wrong foot. It shouldn't be for you. It should be for someone else. It should be for the viewer. 
And uh, this is not going to sound nice. I took a Udemy class for you and it was not what I needed. Your lessons got me to play so much better. Thank you for letting me know. I've been thinking about like teaching on Udemy or like some of those websites um, to just uh, also add to my monthly income so that, you know, I bring in more. Um, what was I saying? Thanks for trying to say my name. All the teachers that can't say it. Ronnie Shavaye. What, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, but for me, I, I, if you're doing it for yourself, um, it's not going to work. Because, oh, this is what I wanted to say. And this is going to sound really mean or really harsh, but somebody's got to say it to you. Nobody likes to watch you on video more than you like to watch yourself. And if you hate watching yourself on video, <laughs> then uh, know that nobody's going to enjoy it more. Like, yeah, some people are weird and they come and watch my videos because they want to see me, but that's less than half of a percent of the people. The people watching my videos are the people who are getting value from it. Like I'm giving them something that is worth their time. And here, here's the next thing. People are giving you the most precious thing that they have in their life and that's time. If someone is giving you the most precious thing that they have, time, use it wisely and make sure that they don't feel buyer's remorse. You know, buyer's remorse is when you buy something and you get home and you kind of regret buying it. Well, um, that happens with YouTube videos when you click on something and you invest some time in it and you regret like clicking on it because it was not what you wanted, it was not worth your time, it was not good enough. Or when you kind of hope that they'll get to the point or when you tap on a YouTube video and they do like a whole minute and a half of intro, like, hi guys, welcome to the channel. Make sure and subscribe, make sure you like, comment down below, share this with you on your Facebook, with your friends, uh, join me on page like, like you're watching a whole commercial before you like get to it, you know? So if you're starting a YouTube channel, if you're starting any videos of any kind, get to the point like hi today we're gonna do this let's get started boom like if 30 seconds in you haven't gotten to whatever you're going to get you've taken too long i have valued every single one of your videos thank you hi susan how are you uh bill yes this is live i am cutting my hair while i'm talking about how to start a youtube channel how to start a business okay so on youtube oh, that looks really crooked on YouTube, you have about 30 seconds to capture the viewer. On Instagram, you've got two. This, isn't that crazy? You have two seconds to capture the viewer. So let's say that you want to grow on Instagram and you're making videos and uh, the video is you. Look, let me, let me act it out. This is what I see on Instagram with people who ask me like, why am I not growing? Okay, so let's, okay, let's uh, pretend this is an uh, Instagram video and action. Hitting record. That is way too long, way too long, way too long. Like, um, if you're starting an Instagram account and you want to gain followers, you should, like, as soon as someone swipes to it, you should be like, <laughs> like, get to it quickly or say like, one, two, one, two, like get their attention in two seconds. If you don't have people in two seconds on Instagram, they're gone. They're bye. Cause it's so easy to just keep swiping. And Instagram and YouTube both respond to watch time. If you keep someone longer on your videos, then they're gonna recommend you more. If people get to your video and then move, like swipe, move on, they're gone and Instagram, YouTube won't recommend you. You've got that, time is precious. I have to limit how much I watch because I have a lot of other things to do. So I'm picky about who I watch. Oh my god! All right, Bernadette, you should do a family guy song tutorial. 
at the Family Guy office. Hey, I would love to do that. Um, I'm going to be in LA next Wednesday. Can I come? <laughs> Um, thank you for the super chat, by the way. That's really sweet. So we're cutting my hair. I think we started like right here, right? Um, yeah, can I come over? Really? <laughs> I'd love to. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be in LA next week. Ooh, I kind of like this length now. Oh my God, you cut it. Yeah, I cut it live. You'll see on the live stream. Okay, so back to what I was saying. If you're starting a YouTube channel, um, it can't be for yourself. You're providing a service for somebody else. And let's say that it's blogging and you think, well, how is vlogging a service? Vlogging is a service of entertainment and inspiration. When you're vlogging something like your day, you might inspire someone to also live their day in that way. So if you're vlogging, how is what you're sharing going to be valuable to them? Short attention span on Instagram, like teaching kindergartners. Exactly. Imagine that your Instagram audience is children. If you want to captivate, capture your Instagram audience, how would you catch kids? You know, be like, hey, everybody, you know, animated. If you're not the animated kind of person, then make sure that you get to the point fast. So just to reiterate, on Instagram, you've got two seconds. On YouTube, you've got 10 to 30 seconds. Um, Kevin, I'm so happy that you're here. I've missed you so much. Um, Demi, hi, thank you for being here. Okay, yeah, so, oh, this is kind of cute. All day long, baby. I just started my journey to play the uke and I'm happy I came across your channel. That's nice to see a few Spanish song tutorials played on uke. Okay, so um, now I would like to, let me see if there was, I think there was another question about this. So, um, how did you get started on everything? How do you drown out the vultures and get over your fear of people? Um, you have to remember that there are people watching you who are so, that have so many anxieties with going to a class or going to have a teacher one-on-one -on -one lesson with another human or to go to a ukulele circle. Like so many of the people who will be watching your content, watching my content, are doing that because being at home is really comfortable. And so you have to remember that you're not the only one who's scared of people or the camera or being out there. Um, I have had people criticize me. Um, I've had people criticize me personally, like on Reddit, on Quora, on Facebook, like we'll say my name and say everything that's wrong with me. Um, and the first time that it happened, I did cry. And I'm not saying this to get pity. Um, I'm saying it to share my experience. Like I did cry about it. And it was someone that like I really respected because they're a YouTuber too. And I really enjoyed their channel and I learned so much from them. And I thought it was very unprofessional for them to attack me that way. I thought that if there's something wrong with my channel that they could confront me one-on-one uh, -on -one or like say like, hey, you're doing this wrong or this is not a good idea or you shouldn't be doing so and so. But they didn't do that. They went straight to attacking me in the forums publicly and other people were participating in that. and. That was really awful, you know, to read so many bad things about myself when my whole objective for teaching on YouTube was to help people. Like, it makes you want to quit. It really does. And I'm sure that you hearing this as one of my viewers, you think like, oh my God, I'm glad you didn't quit. Or like, no, that's not true. I say the same to you. Like when someone comments something that is so mean, um, don't like once i got over it i felt like oh wait am i a threat <laughs> like i didn't think about it that way and then i felt a little bit of power like huh they want me to quit well i'm not um somebody asked uh let me see um how do you approach instagram versus youtube uh, thank you for the question 
And thank you for the super chat that I received earlier. So you can make donations to the channel. Um, I guess on the chat box, there's like a little dollar sign. And I don't know, I think you can donate from like a dollar to, I don't know if there's a limit or anything, but someone donated five, thank you. Um, can you private message me on Instagram about coming to Family Guy headquarters? That would be so fun. Um, and your experience as other bloggers, you know, how long does it take to build enough viewers so you can make a living doing this? I love your channel. Um, I was able to live off of this at around 25,000 views a day. I wouldn't say subscribers because like you're getting paid based on the ads that are playing on your channel. So about 25,000 views a day was when it became like sustainable. And that's because I also had, um, what do you call it? Patrons. Oh, I'm going to cut my eyebrows a little bit because they're getting crazy. Okay. It's just a little teensy little bit up here so that I don't look angry. Oh, went too far. <laughs> I almost went too far. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. The question about John, about how I approach YouTube and Instagram differently. I approach Instagram more like an entertainment platform and YouTube more like, I don't know, more like um, educational platform. I have a problem with the ads for Fender Play. They come up on your videos and say that, tuto that YouTube tutorials suck. I vehemently disagree. You're a hundred times better than Fender Play. So I agree and disagree with that statement. I agree because of course, I think that my channel is better because I'm, I have a master's degree in education and I'm certified to do this. Like, it's not like I'm a nobody, you know, like, I, I mean, I am a nobody, but it's not like I'm not certified to do this. I have the qualifications to be a teacher. Um, but one of my best friends teaches on Fender Play. Her name is Abby and she's actually really great. So, um, if you do use Fender Play, go to the Abby lessons. And I think that there's abundance in the world that there is room for everyone and what I don't like about that ad is that like it says that it's better than YouTube and it's like why do you have to say you're better than something like prove it don't say it prove it like if Fender Play was better in my opinion they wouldn't have to say that they wouldn't have to say oh, we're better than YouTube like just be just be I don't have to go around saying like I'm better than this channel I don't I'm just my own channel like I don't need to push anybody else down while being my own channel. You're somebody in this house and you don't even know us. LOL, even the kids here know you. Oh, Susan, tell the kids I said hi. Are you going to be doing more Spanish song tutorials on Yuke? I feel like that is such a unique market you could tap into. Um, yes, so Hanato's here and um, we filmed another like song for uh, the Spanish channel. So yeah, uh, Abby Lyons is brilliant in Fender Play. She really is. And she's brilliant in Instagram too. Were you recognized a lot at NAMM? No, but I was going live on Instagram and then someone recognized me. And so I looked really cool because they were like, you're Bernadette and I was live. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I made it look like I was famous, but no, nobody cares <laughs> at NAMM. Um, I think like a few of my subscribers who attended a few other events, um, that already know me were there. You and Bosco are so cool. Hope to see more videos of you two together. So the people that like, um, know me from being in person, know me, but if you see me in person, I don't look the same as on video. So people don't recognize me. Um, Somebody else had to say my name for some, that person to recognize me. They're like, hey, Bernadette. And they're like, wait, you're Bernadette? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'm shorter and a little bit like thicker in person. For, you know how like the camera adds 10 pounds? Well, my iPhone camera removes 10 pounds. Um, I look slimmer here. Um, oh, thank you, Kevin. But like I'm a little bit curvier and shorter. 
You're so genuine and real. I think it's part of why you're successful. Was it hard to open up and share more of yourself? It was really hard to open up and share of myself because I thought I'd be boring. Like, I thought, like, people are here for, the, like, the learning. Like, they don't care about me. They just want to learn. So, um, yeah, it was hard to open up because I thought it, I would bore you guys. That's so sad, huh? <clears throat> I love the way you bring in so many others from the Yuke world. I follow all of your friends and have learned even more. Thank you. I think that, like, fame is not fair. And it doesn't go to the people who deserve it sometimes. In a weird way, it does, though. Like, um, there are some people that I've heard play that I think, oh my gosh, they should have way more followers than I do, or way more subscribers than I do. Um, and so I do think, like, that's why it's important to share those people. And that's why I said, like, fame isn't fair. But in a way, it is fair because I've spent years studying marketing techniques, studying social media, studying, oh, thank you for the dollar, thank you. Studying business, uh, reading, I've given up entire years of not listening to music that I want to because I'll listen to audiobooks and I'll read audiobooks and um, that shows because like the channel has grown, the Instagram's grown, uh, Patreon is growing, so um, there are people who are so good at music and I think it's that like they're they're spending time on their music and I've been spending a lot of time on the business side of things so it's showing but I do want to take this year to balance it out a little bit and grow musically so yeah by the way if you're here can you hit the like button it does something on the YouTube background robots it it boosts the video and I think this will be a really cool one for people to watch because I've never thought I'd be cutting my hair live and uh, sharing growth strategies. If you have any more questions before I tap out of here, let me know. I'd like to answer anything else you want to know about growing or starting a business. But a bottom line is you're not doing it for you. You're providing a service to other people, whether it's inspiration, um, education, entertainment. Entertainment is a service. Think about how you pay for the movies or you pay to go to a show. Um, I think it's you, Hinata Fengi, you teacher, no. Did you met, meet Fengi at NAM? I didn't, but I didn't try that hard because I feel like we'll, we'll cross paths somehow, some way. It's one of those things like I feel them, so I was like, ah, I'll catch you on the next one. I want a quiz, please. Uh, we care about you. Thank you. That's so sweet, Leah. Appreciate that. Um, a little announcement. Uh, oh, thank you for the super chat. You're an amazing teacher and your YouTube channel inspired and helped me so much. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, thank you, Nelly. Uh, I do the thumbs up as soon as I tune in. Thank you, guys. Um, and you gave me a gift. The Buena Lessons with Hinaro, I hope. Look at this. So pretty, right? Um, this comes with effects. Uh, let me see. I'm still learning how to use it. Um, <laughs> once I learn how to use it, I'll do a review. Okay, so now it's on. See the green light? So it sounds like it's hooked up. Or you can add delay. Sunshine stuff on this uke. Witchcraft, right? So I need to play with it to get familiar with it. It's like the flight one. That's the thing. I think a bunch of ukes are coming out with this technology this year because I got sent another one in the mail last week and it also claims to have these. So, okay, so I do want to do a review, but I don't want to do all reviews on the channel. Like I, I still want to be a tutorial channel. 
So I think every 10 videos is going to be... Um, uh, I drew a cup of the flight, Diana, that you reviewed. I'm so glad that your market has so many options. Um, I don't want to be a review channel. I really want to be a tutorial channel. So I figured that I'll do nine tutorials, one review. Nine tutorials, one review. So does it have a built-in amp? No, it's not a built-in amp. It's just a transacoustic system, witchcraft. Okay, let me see. How are we doing? Yeah, but anyway, I'm gonna check out of here. I'm gonna go fix the hair in the mirror. I'll be playing with this. And uh, check me out on Patreon if you want to see some of the strategies I'm using to grow. Anything that you see me doing is very intentional. The community tab, the videos here, the time I'm posting, the description box. Um, my Patreon is very intentional. The content that I'm creating only for Patreons, uh, I've learned that from podcasts. And what I do on Instagram is more entertainment, is more like an insight into my life uh, and the stories. So all of that is very intentional. None of it is by mistake. Um, so that's something that you can model and then adjust for your own business as you do it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the super chats. You guys are so sweet. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Sayonara.